Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to be trying out a new tablet and making some art and the art that I made I'm actually pretty happy with but we'll we'll talk about that later. So Huion actually sent me one of their tablets. They sent me their Canvas Pro 16 and it's 2.5k resolution which is I think the highest resolution Huion tablet that I've ever tried. So I'm just going to start with the basic specs about it then I'm going to talk about some pros and some cons and some tips that I have to get certain things to work better. Also I'm left-handed so that's where I'm kind of coming from when it comes to this review but I, I will specify when it's irrelevant. Also the art that I make in this video is actually my November Patreon print so if you want to grab this print and a cute sticker and a little sketchbook page print those will be on my Patreon and you have until the end of November to pledge and you can get those mailed to you. So the model of this tablet is the GT1602 and like I said it has a 2.5k resolution, 145% sRGB wide color gamut, there's a fully laminated display which is great and a lot of their tablets have this now but I think pretty much it's like a standard for them now and this just illuminates a lot of parallax so the tip of your pen and the cursor on the screen are closer together and there's less of a gap. There's a 300 pps report rate so this means you can sketch quickly without lag. And the pen has 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, battery-free pen. This is pretty standard and it's what I've kind of come to expect from Huion. Also, this tablet has pen tablet mode and I think you can connect it to your phone somehow, but I didn't try that out, but I believe that is a possibility. There's also express keys. There's eight of them, which is kind of essential for me, but it's not essential for everyone. Some people prefer to use keyboards. You can disable the express keys if you want, but I use them. I use like control Z, um, brush sizes, save, stuff like that. And the glass is anti-glare and it's etched glass. This means the surface is sort of a more matte finish and it feels a little bit more natural to draw on for me personally. So to test out this tablet I started off by doing a bunch of little sketches in Clip Studio Paint trying to sort of relearn the program because whenever I do uh, digital art on my PC I will use Clip Studio Paint because I just have heard some great things about it and I really like their brushes. And for this video I'm using Sims Art brushes. I watch his live streams a lot and he has these really nice natural watercolor brushes so I just went to his Patreon and grabbed some of his brushes and that's basically what I'm using for this video. His watercolor brushes are the ones that I'm using. So I'm going to talk about the pros about this tablet. First of all it comes with a stand and I really like this stand. I was very impressed when I pulled it out of the package because I remember I tried out a tablet in the past I don't know if it was Huion or a different brand, but it didn't come with a stand and I was like, how am I supposed to draw with this without a stand? Like it's like a flat, like you can't really draw on a flat surface on a screen, like you kind of need something to tilt it up. And this comes with a nice like metal stand, very sturdy, there's a bunch of different heights you can adjust it to, so I was really happy about that. I also really like the size of this tablet, it's not too big, not too small, I feel like the 16 is a really good like desktop tablet easy to move around and store. Um, I have tried their much larger tablets, but honestly, they're just a little too big for me. Um, I'm used to drawing on my little iPad, so this size felt pretty natural. The frosted screen feels really nice, or I guess not frosted, it's like an etched glass. Your pen glides more naturally on it, and I much prefer to draw on this type of surface than a shiny, glossy surface. Um, iPads have that kind of surface, but I got a matte screen protector to put on my iPad to give it that like etched glass feel, but this Huion tablet has it built in, and I think a lot of tablets these days has that, and I really like it. Um, I love that the pen is battery free, but most pens are these days. I wouldn't really recommend getting a tablet where you have to charge the pen, because it's just another thing to worry about charging. Of course, if you get an iPad though, like you have to charge the pencil, but it's really easy to do that. It just snaps onto the top. The pen also has two buttons on it, which is great. I usually set one of these to my color drop tool and the other one is usually like some other mouse button like maybe left click. And it always feels like very comfortable to hold. I, I like their pens. They're, they're pretty nice. Also it comes with a cleaning cloth, a glove if you want your hand to not stick to the, to the tablet, although I don't really have much problem with that so I didn't use the glove. It also comes with a little donut pen stand and extra nibs inside. Also something that I really liked about this tablet and that was noticeable is how crisp the screen was. I feel like I've tried older Huion tablet models a few years ago 
and the screen was definitely not as sharp as it could have been because it was a large tablet, but it was 1080p, so that resolution was stretched over a larger distance, and it wasn't as crisp looking, but because this one is 16 inches and it has a 2.5K resolution, it looks really great to me. I think they also have a 4K version, so I wonder how good that one is because that's like quite a step up from 2.5K and would it be noticeable on a 16 inch? I'd be very interested to see. And like overall, the tablet feels very responsive. It feels very natural to draw on. It's It, it works great and it looks great and it just feels solid. Like this definitely feels like a high-end quality tablet and I was really happy with the way it performed for me. The first con I will talk about though is that like most of these tablets, um, the Huion driver software is always very finicky and you might have to troubleshoot a bit to get it to work properly. That's going to be the biggest obstacle when it comes to using these tablets are the driver softwares. I think they've definitely improved them, but there's still always going to be the little glitches that you have to fix. And this might involve uninstalling the software, reinstalling it, restarting your computer usually fixes things. And make sure you open the software before, like you open the, the driver program before you start using the tablet because then it will make it work more properly. A tip um, for the driver is you can actually get it all set up the way you want and then export your settings and you can re-import them in case they ever get reset. So that can be your like calibration, your express key settings, stuff like that. It will save that if you export it and save it into one of your files. Another con is that the colors are different from my other devices and I find it a little bit difficult to properly match to them and I can't tell which one is more accurate but this kind of applies to any screen really so it's not just a hui on issue but I remember they used to have color accuracy problems um, and I'm just not sure like which screen I should trust. So I was trying to fix this and like change the values of each color with their built-in settings. But because I'm left-handed, I had to check the button that rotates the display 180 degrees. And then I had to rotate the monitor in my window settings so that everything was flipped around for me and the express keys were on my right hand side so I could press the express keys and draw at the same time. But for some reason, when I open up the, the menu for the settings, it's upside down and everything else is right side up. So it's really hard for me to like quickly change settings with the display because I'd either have to like pick up the tablet, rotate it around, like move all the cords out of the way, change the settings and then rotate the whole thing back. Like why wouldn't the menu turn as well? I don't know. It's just a little thing that kind of irked me. Also, the first thing that annoyed me was when I went to plug in the tablet, the cords all point, if you were right-handed, this would be fine. The cords kind of poke up and then they go down towards the back of your tablet. But because I'm left-handed, I had to turn the tablet around and the cords are pressed against my desk and they're bent in a really weird way because of the way that they come out of the like adapter plug thing that plugs into the tablet itself. So it's being pressed against my desk and bent at kind of a severe angle and I'm like is this gonna fail at one point because it's being like flexed too much? I'm not sure. Kind of a minor thing but it's something I noticed that a lot of tablets aren't like that accessible to left-handed people. There are things that people miss when they're designing things for right-handed use. Another thing that might be a con for you, but to me it's not, but etched glass will always have this little rainbowy noise appearance to it that if you look closely, it kind of looks like dotted with like a little, a little texture across the screen. This is because it's like a matte etched glass finish. And that's just how it's going to be if you have this kind of, this kind of screen. It's just kind of a trade-off for having a nicer surface to draw on. It just depends on if you prefer the the more slippery, glossy screen or the nice matte screen that has resistance. This one is built in, but when I use my iPad, I put a matte screen protector on it and it adds the same sort of like noise to the screen. It's really not that noticeable and it's not that big of a deal, but it is something that people might notice. I also want to talk a little bit about the art that I'm making. I actually drew a Fox Traveler character on a log like about two years ago. And I really love that drawing since I made it. And I thought, hmm, maybe I will make sort of like a sequel to that drawing using the sketch I made of this cat traveler and drawing the same log, but approaching it with my current workflow and style. 
So I did all the line work on the tablet and when it was time to color, I took it into my iPad and I did all the coloring there because I'm just a lot more comfortable coloring on my iPad. But I really wanted to use Clip Studio Paint and this tablet to do the sketching and the drawing and um, it worked quite smoothly and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And like I said, you can actually get this print mailed to you. If you go to my Patreon, you get a sticker and a sketchbook page print from my sketchbook and it's only $16 a month no matter where you live and you can join and leave at any time. So you can literally join for a package that you want and then leave afterwards. There's also a lot of other rewards there. I will post scans from my sketchbook and I think I have like over 80 posts of like tons of images from my sketchbook that I don't really share anywhere else. So if you want to see more of my art, that's a good way to do it. And you only have to go to the mid tier for that one, which is $5. That's just a little blurb about my Patreon. But now I want to talk about some tips I have when you're using this tablet specifically with Clip Studio Paint, just some things that I ran into and how I solved them. So as always, when you're installing a new tablet driver, make sure you uninstall all other tablet drivers before you install the current driver. And it's usually good to like restart your computer after every install or uninstall, or if something's not working properly, just try to restart your computer. If you want to change the display settings on the tablet, you have to press and hold the power button and that opens the menu settings and you can actually use the pen to navigate the menu, which is really nice. But if you're left-handed like me, it's going to be upside down. Make sure you open the driver software before you start working. It's going to make it work better. Another interesting problem that I think I've had for a while is whenever I try to use Clip Studio Paint with a tablet on my PC, I find when I drag to select a color in the color wheel, it doesn't quite detect my input right away. It's sort of like, I'll bring my pen to the screen and try to like drag it towards a color I want and it won't move right away and then it snaps into position and this happens every time I want to select a color. And I was like, what is this problem? Is this with my computer? Is this with the tablet? Is this a driver problem? I looked into it and it's something to do with Windows Ink. And you can actually disable Windows Ink in the Huey on driver and then go to Clip Studio Paint and switch your settings to WinTab. And this fixed the problem. If you're having this problem, that's what fixed it for me. I hope someone out there can find that useful because it took me a while to find that solution. And also, if your tablet isn't detecting any input, um, go to your settings and make sure that your working area is selected on that monitor and not on your other monitor because it always goes to the other one first. I think it's because that one is my main display and my Huion is my secondary display. So make sure you select a proper working area. And I find if I haven't used a tablet in a while and I've just been using my PC as normal and when I want to plug in the HDMI and get the tablet working, it doesn't work right away. And I usually have to restart my computer to get the driver to kind of like work, um, which is a little annoying. I did have like a few driver problems where it just like wouldn't work and I have to restart and then it's fine. So. When in doubt, just like restart your computer. It was pretty fun trying out this tablet. The reason why I really wanted to try this one was because of the 2.5K resolution and that it wasn't too big. And I think this might be my go-to desktop tablet for a while. Thanks so much to Huion for sending it to me to make a review. I hope you enjoyed seeing the art that I made as well. I actually had a lot of fun like drawing on my PC. It's a nice refreshing change from the iPad, but I definitely prefer drawing on my iPad. It's just so portable and Procreate is so intuitive and easy to use and I'm so comfortable with that program. I'm so used to it and I can work really quickly that when I try to use Clip Studio Paint, I feel really slow and I don't really like know what the most efficient way is yet. And plus I can't use my hand on the screen because this tablet is not, um, it doesn't have like a touch screen for your, for your fingers. It only works with the pen, but I don't think a lot of tablets have that anyway. But it would be cool if it did because that would make it a lot easier for me to use. If I could use my fingers to move the canvas around and rotate stuff, that would be really cool. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. I'm really excited to send these prints out as well. I love the way the art turned out and I hope this is helpful. And if you have any questions about the tablet or the art or anything, let me know in the comments. So thanks so much again and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.